Alright, so I gotta go over the millennial reign and you know I keep an eye on the stuff and it's non-stop, it's constant and everybody's getting it wrong and they're teaching this zombie-like doctrine that they're not getting it from the Bible. I think that's important to understand that there's a false teaching going around out there that is being dominated in the churches today and it seems to me that nobody's getting it right so I'm gonna continue to stand on the housetop and proclaim this to everybody until somebody else picks it up and maybe that person people will listen to uh, they won't listen to me that's pretty obvious right so I want to go over uh, you know this guy here I was picking on the other day he's a preterist he says that the end of the world has already come the resurrection already happened everything in the Bible is fulfilled and there's no reason to read the Bible anymore and uh, there's no hope at all so uh, that's I guess that's his purpose I mean that's what he's teaching this guy is the complete opposite he teaches that everything is going to happen in the future that the Bible has no relevance for today that everything is going to happen in the future when you're long dead and there won't be nobody around to prove him wrong alright that's, that's a hell of a viewpoint but that's the one he takes a lot of people take it too alright so let's go to this guy let's pick on Judah Ministries hey this is Pastor Michael Yurisha we will also rule and reign over territories, nations, cities, counties, villages, etc. Okay, so the first mistake he's making is he's uh, saying that we're going to reign just like the what we see here physically. He's not able to apply spiritual matters uh, in spiritual terms. He's applying them, uh, the spiritual things that are written in the book of Revelation, to physical matters and that's a big problem because that lacks understanding complete understanding and we'll get into that more allow me to give you some supporting scriptures that we will rule reign and judge with Christ Revelation chapter 2 watch we're going to rule with Jesus verse 26 it says watch 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 this now see this hold on look 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 okay all right I'm watching all right first of all what I see is he's quoting from the NIV. You see that? Alright, so before we let him read from a corrupt Bible, let's read the verses ourselves. Okay. Um, where am I at here? Is this even Revelation 2? It is. Where am I at? Did I go the wrong place? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Where am I? At? Oh, 26. Why does that say 6? Shouldn't that be 26? No, it doesn't matter. Who cares? All right, 26. All right, he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now, that's excellent right there isn't it okay first of all without any context without any understanding you might say hey this guy's right he knows his stuff man he's we're gonna rule reign in the future when we're all dead and nobody can prove him wrong so that he's taken obviously this futurist viewpoint now listen this is very important it's so incredibly important to understand the context of everything that is written in the Bible and if you don't understand it you need to read the Word of God and more importantly you need to believe the Word of God believe the Bible that you hold in your hands and believe and know that it is from God it the secret to understanding is faith alright now let's just real quickly here go over what the context of Revelation 2 verses 26 and 27 are alright so if we go to chapter 1 Revelation 1 we see that the message is to John 
or let me just read it. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Okay, that's the context of what we're about to read here in Revelation 2. This is very important. If you don't understand the context, you're, then all you're doing is taking snippets here and there and trying to make it seem as though your doctrine is legitimate when it's not. Now, and that's how we as believers get fooled when we listen to these guys talk and we don't know the context of what these things are, what they're written about, okay? So let's, we are in chapter 2, all right? So let's know the context. Now this is real simple, all right? Real simple. And we see in the church in Pergamos and uh, so on and so on. There's a church right here. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. So when we get to 22, this is going to be the context. Or excuse me, 26 or whatever. <clears throat> this is going to be the context of what is being written here and without the context man you're gonna fall if you don't know the context you're gonna fall for all these zombie like doctrines that are void of the truth verse 18 and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write these things saith the son of God who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass I know thy works in charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first notwithstanding I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calls herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye already hold fast till I come. And he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so it's very simple. There's nothing really complicated. There's no rocket science here to be figured out. To the churches is to a group of people. All right, and of course the morning star is everlasting life, which is, um, which is uh, our our, glor our excuse me, excuse me glorified bodies when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and we shall rule them with a rod of iron. This is what okay so let me explain it this way this is what Jesus is going to do and we reign with Jesus so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the wrath of God is being poured upon the whole earth and this is the judgment of God we are those who make that judgment because we are one with Christ it's not his decision it's our decision to destroy the whole world so it's not you know what I'm saying so it's not him alone that judges the whole world it is we we are partakers we are one with Christ so when the judgment of God comes 
we are of God. We are one with God. And therefore, it's not just his judgment. It's our judgment that the whole world be destroyed. Okay. So the, the rule, the judgment, the rod of iron, again, it is ours because we are one with the Lord Jesus Christ. And really, it's not that complicated, is it? So when it says he that overcomes, overcomes uh, is talking to a group of individuals and to overcome is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and keeps my works. The works of God is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, so that's not complicated, I don't think. Um, I, I could go over all those verses. But let, let's continue. The one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule them with an iron scepter and will <clears throat> Now keep in mind, this is not like, okay, this is our rule and Jesus doesn't rule. We are ruling with him. We are reigning with him when judgment is made upon the whole earth. Crush them to pieces like pottery, just as I received authority from my father. So Jesus is going to give us some authority. Are you all with me? No, not with you at all. Where's that at? Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Where's that at? I will give him power over the nations. It's not him saying, here you go, take my authority, and now it's your authority. It's we are one with Christ. All right. So, the, I mean, there's a huge difference, isn't there? Is that making sense to anybody? A huge difference between uh, if I have a, my car keys and I give it to somebody else, now they have the car keys and I don't have any control over the car anymore. No, instead, what Jesus does is he makes duplicates. Now we both have car keys. We both have power over the car. And so also here, we both, we're all in agreement and we're all one with Christ and judgment is ours. Not his, not mine, but ours. Come on. We're going to reign with Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 2. All right, and again, if you do not reign with Christ right now, how can you rightly say that you're saved right now if Jesus doesn't if you're not reigning with Christ right now you're not saved here's a trustworthy saying Paul says if we die with well we have he's reading the NIV and I'm telling you you got to be careful this stuff this is not to be taken lightly all right and I'd like if you don't if you're not really familiar with second uh, Timothy 2 I strongly suggest reading it and uh, knowing the context for sure and this is this goes across the board on all things all right so he's gonna read 12 I think 12 and 13 or 11 and 12 okay he's gonna cherry pick to fit his doctrine and uh, well, let's read it for ourselves it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him we shall also live with him if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he will also deny us if we believe not yet he abides faithful he cannot deny himself now uh, the, so the context here is that um, we are uh, how do I put this? I like to, yeah, yeah, I like that word grace. So, how do I put this? Um, this is a faithful saying in the context of what Paul is teaching here. And I'm sure you're familiar with the study to show thyself approved workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I don't know if I could say the context of this, but if you know, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully, the husbandman that labors must first be partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, 
and the Lord gives the understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So in other words, if we're dead with him because he died, so also are we dead to our sins. We are dead to the world, and we shall be uh, made alive again upon his return, which he has promised to come back for us. And so also, because we will be made alive, we are alive in the spirit with him we have everlasting life right now with him all right and if we suffer because he suffered we shall also reign with him so no servant is greater than his master and we know jesus suffered and so also ought we to expect to suffer and if we deny him he also will deny us if we believe not yet he abides faithful he cannot, deny, he cannot deny himself. So if we are born of God, he is in us. And he cannot deny himself even if we were to deny him. So he cannot deny himself. And we have uh, numerous examples in the Bible uh, that further go into depth and detail on that particular thing right there. But... Of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth all right so so anyways um, what this gentleman here wants to claim is that this we shall also reign with him is in reference to uh, a thousand year period now think about this a thousand year period that doesn't happen until after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven after the end of the world all right now what you'll notice about this guy and so many others they will never tell you what happens when Jesus done is done reigning what happens when you're done reigning I mean, this idea that he's presenting is that we're going to be mayors, we're going to be congressmen, we're going to be governors, and for a thousand years. And he, I don't know if he, he admits it because I didn't watch the whole video, but um, the idea is that we're going to be reigning over unsaved people, zombies, people that have no spirit, no life, no opportunity to get saved at all. Or maybe he's going to say that they got a second chance to get saved, which is ridiculous. I mean, if we're already transformed into our glorified bodies, and we could jump off a 10-story building, fall on our head and not die, and we're living among people that if they do the same thing, they will die, and they'll never be saved, and the judgment is hell and death for them. That's your scenario is absolutely insane uh, if that's what you're I mean that's what they're the, that's the scenario that they're painting is that these guys if they're gonna say they got a second chance to get saved that we will never die no matter how crazy we are but they will die if they do what we do since it's just completely insane so um, and the, so let's continue. With him, we will also live with him. If we endure, come on, come on. Also, what? If he who endures to the end, so he, to me, he, he's. Hey, I'm guessing here because you see so many people that say that all you have to do is endure to the end, and you'll be saved. You've heard that before, I'm sure of it. There are a lot of people out there teaching it. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. Alright, so.
Thou therefore endures hardness, okay, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yeah, of course. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So what's this guy talking about? Whoa, 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 hold on, right there it is. If we, so all, oh, that's what it is. If we suffer, so, okay, so the NIV has changed this to endure. To fit their doctrine of enduring to the end. In other words, what Jesus Christ did is in vain. It's a fairy tale. It never happened. It doesn't matter if it happened or if it didn't happen. All you have to do is stay alive until the end and you'll be saved. It, just endure to the end. You've heard people say it. A lot of people that have absolutely no faith, no understanding, will teach that all you have to do is endure to the end. And so I think that's the critical uh, uh, word to overchange, uh, to change there and to help with this doctrine of universalism where everybody gets saved and it doesn't matter what religion you are it doesn't matter how sexually perverted you are you're gonna get saved all right so just change the words of the Bible call it the Bible change the words and then uh, have these words fit your doctrine Rain with him another one for rain Revelation 20 and 6 yeah okay so the problem with Revelation 20 and 6 is that it makes no mention at all of uh, <laughs> makes no mention at all of this idea that there's a thousand year period coming after Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven because verse 11 is when he comes in the clouds of heaven so this is clearly before and of course, if you have faith, you have understanding, you know that this thousand years is a unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return. And because we are born of the Spirit of God during this time, and this is coming to an end when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And of course, descriptions are being given here to describe what it's like during our time right now. People are getting beheaded right now. For being a witness of Jesus Christ and for the Word of God. And the beast of Revelation is in power right now. All, right. And all these things are happening right now. And of course, we that are born of the Spirit of God reign with Christ. We are one with Jesus Christ right now. And so in verse 6, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection being the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he has resurrected, so also shall we be resurrected. And because he has resurrected, he has promised to come in unto us that are born of the Spirit of God. And we that now, therefore, we have the Spirit of God living in us. We are one with Christ Jesus right now. He is in us and we abide in him. And right now, the second death has no power over us. So when Jesus comes back to collect us, and um, the wrath of God is poured on the earth, and those that are unsaved will die the second death. That, we don't, that has no power over us that are saved. Once saved, always saved. So we have eternal life right now now and therefore because we have eternal life right now the second death has no power over us right now we are priest of God and of Christ and we reign with Christ during this time period and we see uh, I quoted this several times and I still don't know first Timothy 2 but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. You get that? We are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Right now, we are priests 
of God and of Christ. I mean, if you're not a priest of God and of Christ right now, how can you say that you're saved? You see what I'm saying? It makes no sense. And then to turn around and teach this zombie doctrine that there's going to be unsaved people living after the end of the world? That's not in the Bible. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of right, God. So, okay, so I got a little bit of problem. Not a big deal. Got a little bit of a problem with will be. They will be. And here it says shall reign. So the implication is this is going to be a futurist event. In other words, the NIV is teaching this futurist doctrine. This doctrine of zombies. On end of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Right there. It comes to an end. So Jesus is done reigning. You're done reigning. It's the end of the world. The devil takes over or you take over. One of the two. What's the difference? Now the purpose of a priest was to present the cause of the people before God. So during the millennial what reign. What the hell did he just say? The cause of the people before God. So during the priest was to present. Uh, hold on a second. I, I missed this the first time. Now the purpose of a priest was to the purpose of the priest. I can't understand what he says, so bear with me. To present the cause of the people be was to present the cause of the people before God. So do Present the cause of the people before God. Now, is that English? Is he reading something here? And during the millennial reign. So, wow. Whoa. Hold on a second. The purpose of a priest was to present was was to present the cause of the the cause of the people for God. So during the before God, the cause of the people before God. So the purpose is to present. The priest was to present. Was to present. The purpose of the priest was to present. The cause of the people be before God. The cause of the people before God. God so during, the purpose of the priest was to present the cause of the people before God. So that might be B E. F O R E before the cause of the people before God. So the priest wanted to present to God the cause of the people. I don't know what he's talking about. I, I, I don't know how what he's talking about. I really don't. During the millennial reign. As presidents. Oh, here we go. Now, this is why he's saying what he's saying. Just never, really, never mind what he just said there. Confusing as it is. Never mind that. For God. So, during the millennial reign, as presidents, governors, mayors, maybe some of us might even be a dog catcher, but that's okay in God. Yeah, so he's applying what he sees in the physical world today. And not able to discern it in a spiritual manner. All right, and that's and that's because he lacks faith. And of course, if you have the NIV, you're revealing yourself as a person that has absolutely no faith in the Word of God whatsoever. And so, if you have no faith in the Word of God, how can you under have any understanding at all? I mean, you, you could have little understanding if you have little faith, sure, but. If you really want more understanding, you want more wisdom, really, if that's what you want, then you have to have faith. Without faith, you're not going to get saved. Without faith, you're not going to have any understanding of the Bible at all. You have to have faith. A little bit of faith, a little bit of understanding. A lot of faith, a lot of understanding. It's not complicated, but it's all about faith. It's always been about faith and I've 
shared this before numerous times over and over over and over and over and over and hopefully one day somebody will pick up on it second corinthians 3 verses 15 and 16 even unto this day when moses is read the veil is upon their heart in other words they read the bible and they do not understand it because they don't have faith nevertheless when it shall turn to the lord when it shall have faith when they have faith in the lord jesus christ the veil shall be taken away and now they begin to understand what they read because they have faith now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty so we have absolute freedom and all things shall be known to us all we have to do is seek it all right so this guy's going on about dog catchers you I'm gonna be the president but you're gonna be a dog catcher and that's okay the world needs ditch diggers too right so that this is his idea of what is going to happen at the end of the world now what he was not going to get in I go I haven't seen the whole video so I can't guarantee it but he's not going to explain this idea that there are unsaved people he's just gonna he wants to stand over unsaved people when he's in his glorified body and say, Sinner, 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 I'm, you do what I say. I'm the boss. I'm the effing boss around here, and I'm going to judge you and tell you what to do. I run this place. That's, it, well, that's what he wants. It's absolutely insane, idiotic, evil, and wicked as all can be. It is. What kind of doctrine are these guys teaching when they teach this idea that there's a thousand year period coming after the end of the world? I don't think they put any thought into it at all. I really don't. They don't put any thought into how evil, wicked, and disgusting it is. It truly is. So you know that when you are saved and when Jesus comes and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye that you know we're in our glorified bodies now to put us back down on earth with unsaved people now think about this these unsaved people are still having sex and you're not is that the vision that you're creating here think about that you don't think that they want to have sex with you like what we saw in uh, with Lot and uh the angels that were with Lot and the the Sodomites wanted to come in, wanting to have sex with the angels. They didn't know they were angels, but they wanted to have sex with them. Don't you think that they're, they're going to be people, perverts and faggots, wanting to have sex with you when you are in your glorified body? What kind of a vision are you trying to establish here? Uh, really, think about it. It's disgusting because there's not going to be any of that going on. Our hope is not in a world where we're surrounded by perverts and faggots. That's not our hope. That's not my hope. My hope is in a perfect world where there is no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, and no more death. And the <laughs> Look, it's not just me that you know, I don't want to die. Of course, I don't want you to die. So you're gonna, you, the scenario this guy's painting is that we're gonna be in a thousand-year period where people that we generally, genuinely love and care for, even though they're unsaved, you know we love them, even though they might be in, our enemies. We're instructed to love them. Our neighbors and people among us people you know if you're a dog catcher and you're ruling over somebody with a dog you you're gonna love that person you're gonna care for them They'll, they might be elderly they might be in their 80s 90s old and about to die you're gonna love them and care for them 
and then you're going to see them die and that's going to hurt but there is no more sadness no more sorrow no more tears after we are resurrected into our glorified bodies that's we're not look it's not making any sense when these guys teach this idea of a thousand year period after the return of Jesus Christ which is at the end of the world makes no sense these guys are not putting any thought into it but people are eating this up and I don't know why is it because they love wickedness they love evilness they love the perverts and the faggots and dream of a world where everybody's a pervert and a faggot is that what they is that what's going on here because they love darkness they love these visions of darkness that are not true is that what's happening here really why are so many people connecting with these false teachers and eating them up it's insane God's kingdom somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, listen I'd much rather be a dog catcher I'd much rather be a doorkeeper come on somebody than be a in God's kingdom than be a president in the devil's kingdom well that's about the only thing he said that makes any sense but at the same time when we are resurrected at the end of the world when we are transformed when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye and the new city of God comes down from heaven the new Jerusalem and we are sat back down there's not going to be presidents and dog catchers that type of world will be done away with and It, so this idea is just nonsensical it really is when we are resurrected and we are changed and we are in our glorified bodies in the new city we are not going to have this the corrupt wor wicked world that we see today it's not going to be like this where we have a president doorknob or whatever his name is ruling over us and the propaganda and BS that we see on TV and read about in the newspapers it, it the whole this whole world is wicked and we're so entrenched in it and we're so ensconced in it that we don't even realize how wicked this whole d-a-m-n world is so anyways I think that's enough I rambled enough about this but look it's not complicated Revelation 20 is talking about those of us that live that are born of God we live and reign with Christ right now it's not complicated and the second death has no power over us and the whole purpose of the serpent being bound for a thousand years is so that when he's loosed he will gather together the unsaved at our feet and this is to fulfill the prophecy that goes all the way back to Genesis 3 when Jesus when the Lord says to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and it shall bruise his heel Right, this right there, in we see numerous examples of uh, "Tell I make thine enemies thy footstool." So again, go back to Revelation 20, when uh, the enemy is gathered together, they are at our feet, and we are up in the air with the Lord, just as it says, at the sound of the last trumpet, first the dead in Christ shall be raised then those of us which are alive and remain shall be lifted up with them and that's when uh, our enemy is gathered at our feet all right that's when the devil or Satan is loosed and our enemy is gathered at our feet
right, just as Revelation 20 talks about. All right, and then so that's the judgment, or that's, you know, that's the wrath of God, excuse me. The judgment of God is very simple. Are you saved or are you not saved? That's it. There is no other judgment. If you, it, I've talked about this the other day. It's like data um, communications. You got zeros and ones. So when you're transmitting data from one source to another source, you, all it's doing is sending zeros and ones, right? So, uh, so also is the judgment judgment of God. Do you have zero sin or do you have one sin? The only way to have zero sin is if your sin is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are saved, you are born of God, then you have a zero, but everybody else has a one. Right? And that's the judgment of God. And so the judgment or the consequence of not being a zero is the second death. And that's when the wrath of God comes down upon all wickedness and the whole world is destroyed. All right. So I think I've rambled on enough. But uh, if I got anything wrong... If I'm not being fair to this guy, let me know. Because to me, it, to me, it's crazy how so many people are getting this wrong as if they're putting no thought into it at all. And all they are doing is getting these ideas from false teachers. They're not getting it from the Bible. In other words, we read that in 2 Timothy 2. Well, I don't think this guy's gotten that far. I wonder. I really do. Oh, it might, maybe I haven't got... Oh, there we go. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed to rightly dividing the word of truth. So study the word of God. Instead, I think these guys... I really do. I think these guys are studying false doctrines and trying to figure out how to teach them with their own little spin it I mean really if you don't if you don't believe in a perfect Bible which you cannot believe in a perfect Bible if you're quoting from the NIV then you're lacking you know you're lacking faith so anyways I think I rambled on enough about this but just let me know if I'm wrong about anything if I goofed up my words if my words are too strong too weak uh, and most importantly if I'm not being fair about this whole thing let me know so I you know this is crazy you see this just over and over and over people are getting it wrong A thousand year already happened the dead in Christ are already raised up it's well documented don't read your Bible anymore. And it's insane. And doesn't anybody care about the truth anymore?